I always had fears, to be honest, when I went back home. If I ever, if life ever led me back home, even though I had all the education behind me now, I always thought, what if I have to go back to packing crackers in the factory again? <laughs> yeah, I, I, had, I had literally had nightmares about it's it. I, fear, was like, I think it's yeah. fear of being broke again. Yeah, yeah. You always have that. Do you know what? And to be, to be honest, that as well, but I, I couldn't care less about the money. Some, what I'm doing in the moment. Kind of to it. Yeah, yeah, the purpose yeah. behind it all. Here we go. It's okay, bro. Chill. It's not that serious. <laughs> Something about drinking a challenge just takes a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, though, look at us and look at y'all. Yo, welcome back to San Leone Boys. It's your boy Griffin. Que lo que is your boy Que el Bing. Good evening. My name is Adon. Of course, we got Bazo on the ones and twos. And today, it's uh, I was looking forward to this episode for a while. Hailing all the way from Liverpool, England, the fighting city. He has played in pro academias in England for Liverpool's, the Liverpool schoolboys. Wingman Athletics or Wingen Athletics? Wig, Wigan, Wigan. Wigan. Yeah, Wigan. Yeah. Thank that's you, brother. The and then Matt Morecambe. That's what I was expecting. Morecambe FC. Morecambe, yeah, that's the one. Everyone Morecambe says, FC. Yeah, Morecambe. Played in United States League or United uh, Soccer League here with the Peachtree Mobas. Yeah, that's the one. Summer League. And the Dalton uh, Red Wolves, Dalton yeah. Chattanooga yeah, Red yeah, Wolves. Played for our own here, home of the Roadrunners. At here at that Dalton State. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tyler Hudson. <laughs> Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you very much. So, and that was just a few things or whatever that, that you have sent me. Yeah, Because all yeah, this, yeah. I know you have a degree and you started the Shankly Elite That's training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is that how I'm pronouncing it correctly? Yeah, yeah, Shankly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And probably one of our best sounding guests, the accent, bro. <laughs> God. It's, it's great, dog. So, yeah, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, one minute in already? Yeah, yeah, that no, I'm just saying, dog. <laughs> yeah, we'll put an accent counter. And I'm going to try hard. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try... Not to, and I'm gonna mimic the accent. At one point, right. eventually, it's gonna come out, brother. Go for it, go for it. And uh, but you, were, I was asking you earlier. You know, it's not offensive whenever you're like Americans like mimic the no, accent. No, we get it all the time. As soon as we moved over here, it was as soon as we went to obviously oh. the college, went out to stores, bars, everything. You is that all? Oh, hey, where are you from? <laughs> yeah, you get it everywhere, and it works to your advantage sometimes. Sometimes some people can't understand you. Uh, example with me now, when I first started coaching my kids in in, the, in obviously the company. It was hard for them to understand what I was saying, so it was like I had to tone it down big time. And um, when I go back home, I get a lot of stick for it. Mm. <clears throat> but this kind of goes away. Yeah, it's or, like, yeah. oh, what's happened to your, ask, your accent? Me, uh, me dad always says, oh, you. Me dad thinks like the the Yankee of America is is all over America. I know it's like the Yanks, but it's more we know that's like up north more. Right, right. And he says, oh, you're the Yankee now, aren't you? And all that. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know I'm your, a good old southern boy. Yeah, your Pops. accent's gone, but. As soon as I go back home and come back after Christmas for like two weeks, it's back and nobody Just like thicker me. than ever. Even yeah, right now, yeah. I'd be like, bro, it sounds yeah. like super thick. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It sounds and like... then when I'm with him as well, when I'm with Jordan. Yeah, shout, uh, out to, shout out to Jordan yeah. off camera. <laughs> here. Gang, 42 gang, gang. years old today. <laughs> 42 years old today. Yeah. Like Happy that, birthday, anyway. Vlad. Yeah, no, that's what it's like. It's uh, every time we go somewhere and obviously come back into the country and all that, it's, it's, it's as thick as can be again. All right. Big question. I guess one of the main things is how... In the world, would you end up here, right? In, in Dalton, Georgia, from yeah. Liverpool, England? Yeah, a lot of people ask the same question. That's the probably Soccer Town of, USA, yeah, though, right? Yeah, it is now, isn't it? But, and it has been for many years, to be honest, obviously, as far as my uh, my knowledge goes back. Yeah, to, but, to but guys it's just, that we I feel like with. finally got the recognition. Yeah, yeah, recently. of course. But um, that's the, probably everyone's first question on the top of their heads when they first meet me or one of the lads who's from somewhere else. Because you said outside. also. Jordan's uh, from Liverpool as well, yeah. Yeah, he came uh, here with, with you as well. Yeah, come, I think, about a year before me originally and went to another school and then. Wound okay. up together here in Dalton, but I um, I got the opportunity to come over through the same agent that me and Jordan come through, and another another guy called Ellis who uh, who is not in America anymore. He went back home to England, but uh, we come by through uh, a guy named Tony Robinson, whose whose son is actually the left back on the U.S. national team, Anthony Robinson. So we were just in connection with him through a soccer academy in Liverpool for years. He basically run training sessions for kids who didn't have clubs like professional academies or who were good enough to go off to professional academies and play there. Okay. So, so, so then in growing up, uh, always had a love for soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. F- football, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Football. So, yeah. Football. So then we, uh, we, I, I, I only went to his session once to be honest, uh, Jordan, when he played place, he played for his academy for a few years and the first session he sent me off to another professional club. And that's where I went and signed like a, basically a two year apprenticeship type thing, which is like a, it's called a scholarship, but it's it's like you go and do your schooling with them and then you live down there and play for the club if it's like an outside of like an hour radius of your hometown or something. So that was like your first exposure to professional soccer because you're around the first team, you're around full grown men, not playing with them week in, week out, obviously, but you you see them, you're around them, you get the feel what they're like. And 
that's really a turning point then to see if you are actually going to go and get your first pro contract. And uh, that club was, when I left Wigan, I, I got released from Wigan at 16 and then I ended up going on trial at a bunch of clubs. My dad drove me up and down the country so, for months. So then um, I guess kind of backtracking just as far as personal backstory. Yeah. Uh, born and raised in England? In Liverpool, in Liverpool yeah, England? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so just, and I feel like naturally, it's just a very big... Um, uh, just the soccer, football. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. a very big football, culture there. Football city, yeah. It's, it's, so just kind of natural as a kid. Yeah, you're like, this is what I'm going to do. That's all That's all you know when you're from Liverpool, really. There's a lot of people that do everything on the outside, like fighters and boxers, MMA mm. now, of course, have been really big. I feel like MMA is huge yeah, over big, there. Big, big one, big yeah. one. Especially Liverpool with obviously the likes of Till and the body coming yeah, into I'm about it now. To say, and all that. Well, I remember one of the first times that we ever uh, uh, talked was at a D-Food collab. Shout out to them. <laughs> uh, we were drinking and then we started talking about MMA and then I asked you your top five goals. Yeah, I fell in love. You fell in love yeah, with yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I, th I think I met you at the bathroom and you didn't, you didn't, even, you didn't, you didn't even go to the bathroom. Uh, no, I was like, you were just like an hour ago, yeah. Bro, that boy, that boy was so excited he forgot to pee, dude. dude literally since that day, he hasn't stopped talking, dude. he had the pee stain on his pants all night, like, well. You're a mad lad, yeah. you're a mad lad. Man, you off the rails. Is that good? Nah, it's all right. It's all right. You know what? It's, it's, it's better. It's better than most, to be honest. It's better than most. I feel like I've practiced, and I feel like honestly, I feel yeah. like I'm a little shy to do like a full blown. But uh, because I, I do it a lot, I do it a lot. Yeah. But I feel like I don't know. I feel like <laughs> whatever. A little uh, intimidated to do it right now. Uh, you know, like, don't but, worry um, about it. But uh, so we we're talking about top five MMA goats. Yeah. And in one of them, yours was Michael Bisping, which I I love Michael Bisping. Yeah, yeah. That's the but, most, that's the most like, but bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. The bias answer of all time. Greatest fighter of all time, Michael Bisping. I love nice. him. Don't get me wrong, Dick Ryder. Yeah. But would I say, <laughs> would I say, would I say he's goat, bro? I would not. I would not. No, I mean, I think it's because it's like the, he was the original, original man for the British MMA scene. Do you know what I mean? And, I think I remember watching it with my uncles years ago and Bisping was the man at the time coming through. And then obviously as the years have went by, we've had a load more with obviously the, a load coming from Till's gym, a load coming from Paddy the yeah, Baddy's gym. And then you got Leon generation. Edwards yeah, that Leon, just won. Leon Edwards has just come up, up the ranks big time, but, obviously. And, and I feel like for people that don't know who Michael Bisping is, he is a professional uh, mixed martial artist, professional, um, fights in the UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship. And he actually won the middleweight championship with one eye. Yeah. Like he literally <laughs> only had... One eye. Nice. Were, no, he went in. He went in with two eyes. Yeah, yeah. but no, but what? Yeah. Like, wasn't even working. Yeah. Like, glass like, like he used to have like a thing with his coaches. Like before, like, um, uh, like whenever they would do like vision tests, they'd be like, "Hey, if he's gonna hold three fingers up, call, cough twice. If he's gonna hold two fingers up, you know, sneeze or something like that." Oh, so oh god. So <laughs> to, to get out of like the uh, like the physicals of like for the eyes, because his eye yeah, did not yeah, work, yeah. bro. So, so he lost his eye fighting and just kept fighting with one eye. Uh, yeah, actually, Vitor closed, closed over in the big time yeah. and just v kept going. Yeah, wow. Vitor's still yeah. winning with one eye. Yeah, and then so again, I mean, amazing achievements, but you know, just go a <laughs> little biased, brother. But uh, yeah, but anyways, no, no, that's it, really, isn't it? But so in Liverpool, it's just fighting and soccer. Fighting and so soccer. So you're just yeah. kicking all the yeah. time, either way. <laughs> <Something> like that, <laughs> you're yeah. kick eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just yeah. kicking. I got into the fighting side of it because of all my friends being into it big time when I was younger, and I end up here uh, doing me kneeing. In, a, in one of the sparring sessions and my, my dad literally gave me the decision he come and pick me up he wasn't a bit happy and he said hey, hey you gonna be a fighter or a, or a, a footballer God wow. I, I, I said, yeah that literally was like, like a movie, huh? I'm done and just ended up doing it for the training and like the cardio purpose in the end like obviously BJJ and all that I did all the time but sparring obviously kickboxing Thai boxing I just cut it off schoolyard you're fun yeah. in the schoolyard man no, do you know what? I was a good kid in school. Yeah, a few, really? few street fights, a few fights on the on the soccer field when I was in high school. Mm. That, was, that was the only time I could get away with it. When I was with my club, as in like the professional clubs, you couldn't get bro, away with it. But by the way, you said you guys don't even graduate. You just leave yeah, high school. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? How does that work? Yeah. When you're ready, just when you're ready, no, you know. You, um, yeah, you basically, you've got a choice to make when you're 16 in, in England. You basically either leave high school if you've got something else to go on to. Like we call it college. It's like a second diploma basically what you go on and get like it's called a levels um basically your last two years of high school junior and senior year and you'd either go off um to college do like a trade do something like that or you go off like i did and play for a soccer club and play five six days a week obviously train with the professional outfit and um all that stuff and then if you don't you go to a thing called sixth form which is your last two years of high school but that's what that's in your same school you stay there okay. is it yeah. common to stay for those last two years yeah yeah most people do okay they, they, it's only like the small small minority that don't that they're, yeah, were they you at, at 16 you were for sure you were out yeah or? I was I was I was determined that I was I was gone not just because I, I love school 
But I was determined that I'm, I'm getting that concept. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't learn it about triangles yeah. no more. Yeah. 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 These, this geometry yeah. class is not going to do, yeah, do it no, for me. Yeah, no, my thing, like every young player, long, young soccer player's dream in England at that time, you're like, I'm leaving school, I'm going to play for the professional club. And um, my, that was my mindset at the time. And then a year and a half, two years down the line, it completely changed. And okay, just like, so uh, so let's, let's talk from 16 uh, leaving yeah. and then going. So you chose to play with a team and already, how does that yeah, work? Mark they reach out swing. to you? Yeah, well, because I got released from Wigan who were a Premier League club at the time. Uh, I was in the shot window. That was while in high school? Yeah, yeah. I was I was obviously playing for their U15, U16s and uh, it was, you're in the shot window then because you've come from the top league as an academy kid. So you go ahead and get calls from different academies and to be honest, I something messed up in the system for mine and I didn't get loads of calls even because, and then we checked a few a few months later, and the coach who was the head of the academy didn't put my name into the list of released players. So technically, everybody mm. thought I was still playing for that uh. club. So we had to reach out on my own and uh, went to a few different clubs around the northwest of England, around the area. And my dad just literally every single night, different club, different club, different club. Wow, till you got trialing. in, till you got in. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, you just get answers like, oh, we've. Well, shout out to your dad one time. Yeah, shout yeah, out to your yeah. dad. No, 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 great dad, man. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah, his name? So What's his name? His name's Paul. Yo, yeah, shout yeah, out Paul yeah, one yeah. time. Hey, you mad Paul. lad. <laughs> you mad lad. Oh, no, but yeah, he drove me up and down the country for basically six months. And uh, I went to different clubs. I was liked a lot at some of them. Some of them, not so much. And uh, then wound up meeting the the fine man in Tony Robinson. And that's uh, that's when I met Jordan as well. And, and that's the agent. Yeah, yeah. He's, he was the agent at the time. And the, the academy, basically, director, if you like, that, that sent us over here. And... I kept in touch with him over the next two years while I was signed at Morecambe. And uh, he, he called me one day on a on a, a Tuesday morning, just random. And uh, he'd heard that I'd been interested in going to America. And with his ties over, he obviously with his son and obviously with his, I think he come to, I think he went to Duke University here as well. So okay. he was a college student here as himself and a college athlete. Um, and he called me up a Tuesday morning and just said, listen, I've got an opportunity for you in America. And I was like, oh, when do we go? And he said, um, well, here's the thing. Just sit down a minute because I've got a lot of information for you. So I said, okay, fair enough. What is it? He was like, the whole top and bottom of it is you've got to go next week. Oh, wow. So I yeah. Weeks said, notice. Yeah, so I said, you're going to start cutting weight right yeah, now. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fighting weight yet. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But no, I just said to him, I was like, I was fit. Obviously, I was in season and he said, you're going to go over and play for an academy and and stay with a family over there. And to this day, they're literally like mine and Jordan's parents still over here. They're called, they're called the Samnix, yeah, in Atlanta and looked after us since day one as, as a, a lot of families in Dalton looked after me while I've been here as well. So, so you, came, you came straight here to Dalton? No, no, I actually went to Atlanta first. Okay, Atlanta. Yeah. So what, what were you thinking? You're on the plane from the UK to America this family you've never met. Like, what are what are you yeah. thinking initially? Do you know what? And like, I don't want to eat McDonald's every day. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's some thought. But I did a FaceTime. Well, at, at back then, it wasn't even... Well, it was FaceTime. Like Venmo we, we, no, or we, like we went Skype. on Skype. 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 Venmo Venmo's was for Venmo, money. Venmo, you <laughs> talking bad, through man. Venmo. <laughs> hey, my money. I ain't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I... Yeah. Me, me and both... Me, me and my parents, I think the, the day after I found out, I was on Skype to him and was just talking to him. And Jordan had already met them, I think, a, about a half a year before. So I thought, okay, well, they're, they're legit people that just want to help somebody and give us a place to stay. And my parents were offered money. How do you money sign up for just the, to be the foreign exchange? It wasn't even that. It was just our connection that we had through Tony. And he just said, yeah, yeah oh, you're really? literally going. And he, he had that connection with that family and said, listen, I'm sending boys over to stay with you. And when they went to England, he sorted them out with a load of trials with, with the clubs and stuff. Oh. So that was their kind of connection at the time. And... Basically just did that and I think, yeah, the sub, I, I found out on a Tuesday and by the Sunday I was in Atlanta. How old were you whenever that happened? 18. 18? Yeah, I was, I was like a senior in high school at Dude. the time. So so you show up to America with this accent on you, right? <laughs> dude, what are the girls looking like, dude? Ah, uh, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> what about the men? What were the men looking like? <laughs> no comments again. <laughs> You've had a few of them, to be fair. Yeah. Dude's like a don. But you're you're not fully white. You're like mixed with something, right? Yeah, my dad's actually half Indian. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah. yeah, I guess that'd be a... Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, that's, that's, that. that's the whole thing. My mum's from, from Liverpool. My dad's from Liverpool as well, but his dad was was half Indian as well. Oh, well, yeah. and, I, and I know now uh, in a in a relationship, you yeah, know, shout yeah, out to the yeah. missus, right? Yeah, well, been yeah. for a while. How long you been? Two years. Two, two years, years last week. It was, well, two How years, two weeks ago. Because I know she's, um. Uh, you said two years, two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah Oh, that's the congrats, one. brother. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you pop the question? 
I'm sure she's wondering. <laughs> yeah, she's no. pissed right now. Give no, me a ring. No, no actually, comments again. Actually, <laughs> right now, right now, we're gonna take a minute so he can do it. Yeah, actually, if you you were gonna do your proposal right now today. Oh, okay, what's well, a Jordan? Uh, as, or? <laughs> yeah, as the whole family is sitting in the living room, <laughs> this is the time you've been waiting for. But how was the 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 culture barrier? Why well, I feel like just in in coming to the United States. I'm sorry, no, as, as you were. As I said before, it's like oh, our personality from Liverpool. It's 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 like it's a Northern England thing, but Liverpool, like especially. We adjust and, and take in anybody. Do you know what I mean? And I've always said for years being here, we really connected with the Hispanic culture as well because we're, I know we don't speak the same language to an extent, but we're very, very similar backgrounds in like, it's a lot of working class backgrounds. That's tough, that tough stuff. Yeah, man. yeah. So everyone knows how to grind and work hard and obviously also have a good time at this at the same yeah. time. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. that's why I really connected with a lot. And uh, that, I think that's what it was a, a turning point with the company at the start that, we had mostly of, of like the, the white American background, to be honest. And I love everyone. I want everyone to come. And I think the Hispanics are more like Liverpool people as well. They want to see what they're paying for first. Mm. That they're like, oh, I don't think that's worth it just yet. But then once they obviously connected with us and the kids started loving it, of course, they all love soccer as well. They're like, hey, I love that. I love this guy. I love the way he is with the kids. And it's like you're a real person. Do you know what I mean? I think I probably got judged a little bit sometimes because I was from somewhere else that they're like, oh, wait there, hold back up for a bit. Oh, and then mm. everyone else was like, okay, he's, he's all right, Tim. Let's let's go ahead and give him a shot. I get you. Because it could have come yeah. off kind of crazy. It's like you're coming over here. Yeah, yeah, um, of course, yeah. Trying to, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Local. No, but when you're trying to, you know, like take advantage, I guess. Oh, of like being, yeah, you know, yeah, of course. Oh, you know? No, of course. Right, I get you. No, you know. no, a lot of people And, and it have comes off emotions. like that. But yeah, I feel yeah. like, yeah, no, and it seems genuine what you're yeah, doing yeah. as well. And like you said, like, bro, like, no, we see your intentions are pure. Yeah, yeah. It, it means different. But we're not even talking. We haven't got to Shankly yet. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we're still, we're still no, in, in school. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then. Yeah. And, we just got, got to America. Yeah, obviously to America. And then I played for a, an academy in Atlanta called Concord Fire for um, four and a half months. And sounds like a, that sounds like a dance crew, I know, bro. I know. That's, hey, that, <laughs> that, that, that's literally what I thought when I first come. I was like, what kind of academy is this? <laughs> but, I went, I went to an academy called Georgia United first, which had a, a lot of top guys on that that went off to either play in the pros, a few of them played in youth national teams and all that. And I just went over and started playing for them one day. Basically just went to the practice and the coach was actually from England as well. And even he was like, what on earth are you doing here? Like right. this, it's not normal that a, a, an English person's over here at this, at this stage. You normally come for college instead of high school type stuff. Oh. And I said, oh, I've just been sent over here last week. And he was like, what? So I think he thought, oh, let's see if this kid's got a bit about him. And the thing from from Liverpool especially is you, you're on the field, you want to make a statement, you just crack somebody straight away. <laughs> what is that? Just, you just punch, abs, you punch abs, people? No, I mean, I remember he, no. yeah, he tested us out and he, uh, he, he put one of the kids who was originally playing on the left wing on the right wing against me. And uh, I thought the only one thing in my mind, Big Mike, who we call Big Mike, who we stay with, He'd never seen me play before either. He just took a word from the uh, Tony back home. Said, this kid's all right. Like, look into him and send him off to a few clubs. So he put one, I think it was probably the best player on the field against me, thinking he'll just rinse him in and out. And I just put him on his on his ass straight away. Mm-hmm. And he uh, he didn't want to play anymore. And all the other kids were like, whoa, he's a different type, this guy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I wasn't the best player like in the world, you know what I mean? And there was a reason I wasn't at a top like academy in England. I was playing in a pro team, but... I wasn't in the Premier League anymore. There was guys head and shoulders above me, but I had that grit about me that was yeah. like, you know, all right, let's let's prove a point. Now I'm over in America. I've got nothing to lose. Right. You, and, know, you had to make you had to be <clears throat> tough to make up for that little bit of skill you were lacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I added, of course, and I added in high school. But then there's there's guys and that are head and shoulders above you at the same time. That's what my dad used to say to me. He was like, Ty, you're a good player, but there's a lot of players better than you. And that wasn't like him putting me down. It was like work harder yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean motivate them be the fittest person in the team all the time because that will overcompensate and yeah okay I've got technical ability like a lot of guys have even at this level and college levels but there's still a reason why you're not playing yeah. at, in the pro level that age you know what I mean you're, you're not that good yeah. do you know what I mean yeah, so, I like that, that's the best thing you could do because I feel like a lot of parents they, they'll tell their kid like oh you're the best you're, yeah, the, you're the greatest yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. he's out there awful yeah, yeah. And mumbling they, yeah, yeah. And then so, the real world comes and just like messes <laughs> yeah, them up, you know? Yeah, but I mean, sometimes like having heart is better than being no, like, have, I know like it's, being hey, with skills. No, I'm just telling you, like the, the traits, what you learn from from obviously being that type of player as well, even in a, any sport, it carries you off through later life that you're like, I can use that even if I didn't make it to the top. And I had a teacher and um, I went home a couple of summers ago and actually worked in my my old high school as a teacher. And uh, the, the teacher in knew who taught me when I was in the school said to me, 
would you ever thought what would have happened if you didn't get released from Wigan at 16? I said, I've thought about that many times, but do you think I care? Mm. And he was like, well, what's your feelings about it? I was like, I wouldn't be where I am today if I if I didn't get released, you know what yeah. I mean? I wouldn't be the person. And it, it, it all played, put two and two together. It was like, wow, look where I've come since having that kind of, it was a minor heartbreak at the time, do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's crushing at the yeah, time, right? Yeah, that, yeah. That's like your whole world. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like sometimes in life you get caught up in that, because you know, in that, that little bubble and you're like, oh my God, this thing didn't work out. Like yeah. everything is terrible. No. But you don't realize like sometimes when they close those doors, you know, other no, doors No, of open. course. That's it. That was the car journey on the way home. When I got released that day, it was, to be honest, it was, it was bullshit what I got told. But yeah. at the same time, it was. Oh, we can say bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like that. <laughs> oh, by the way, shout out, shout out to the oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, Shankly can die, mate. Yeah. You know, and I'll take that yeah. to the grave. Yeah. Sorry, that might have been too much. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting in a session you know next what I'm week. Saying, Just time. don't say they it when me, you're in the session yeah, next week. Yeah, they tell me before the cast, it was like, it was like, yo, we're gonna try to keep it a little bit cleaner. So chill out, dude. Yeah, so I was just yeah. waiting for you there's, to say there's something. There's minor things. Like, <laughs> like, at the end, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm from Liverpool. We do have that type of language yeah, as well. But um, <laughs> but no, no, no. And so then, uh, playing at Dalton State is that that come here? Should that come shortly after? Yeah, all this? yeah. As I said to you the other day, I was I committed to the University of Wisconsin first, and mm -hmm. a turn of events come that I said the turn of events. It was basically the one of my English grades didn't transfer over basically quick enough to become eligible. Your English? Oh. English, because English high school is a little bit different. Like, like your credits or whatever? Yeah, yeah, I, our grades, the credits didn't come I thought, over. I thought so. they were talking about like your yeah, actual I, English you know, class. Yeah, yeah. I was short zero, 0. 0.5 of a credit for some reason. Ooh. Don't know, wow. still don't know why, but I had to stay home for another year and you don't, again, you don't take English class in England, yeah, right? Yeah, we take, yeah, yeah, we take yeah, it all, You're already there, though. The, the irony of this one. The, 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 <laughs> like I you're know, here, I know. You're here, yeah, You'd be surprised, but <laughs> the irony of that, I was short in a biology credit, and I end up graduating with a biology degree in college. Mm. So they thought, oh, he's no good at science. And to, to be fair, just, I, your whole to life be fair, I, people wrong. To be fair, I winged a lot of it in yeah. biology, and it was very hard, but... I got through a whole degree when that was stuff that was supposed to be holding me back years yeah. before. So the, the, but, the typical athlete just getting by. Yeah, just like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, no, do you know what? You can't get by properly in, in biology. You have to. Oh know, no! So you have to know something. <laughs> it's crazy. Cool. And yeah. I feel like all the little when things are just smaller than you can actually see, it's very hard. No, to care. I know for it's sure. Insane. That's, that's, that's what, what I mean. my ex said, dude. Yeah. Well, that's why would she say <laughs> that? Though? I don't know. She said it. Then she left. <laughs> she, <laughs> never, she never explained it. No, they just, yeah. I've been wondering this whole time. Yeah. The last Jesus word she Christ. says, like when something's that small to see, it's hard to care. And then she just left. <laughs> I don't know. I never understood. So yeah. you, said, so you, you guys want to explain uh, it to me? Or? No, no, you're I good, just, you're just good. Google it when you get over. <laughs> <laughs> so you said yeah. uh, Concord Fire, and then from there, yeah. who would you end up going to after that? Commitment to Wisconsin then, to Wisconsin? and then I uh, I went home, and again, I um, I think it was the start of August, so technically I was about to be flying out there in two weeks. I actually had a leaving party and everything, knowing I was going, and then got the call a so week much later. Guinness. So much Guinness. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But <laughs> the week later, got told I couldn't go and all my family said bye to me everybody my friends had a full blown party and, uh, and then you just see yeah. them the next week and then everyone was like everyone was like I, I was actually in a bar in Liverpool like the next week and we were like what are you doing here I thought you were in America and I was like hey something happened but yeah I got the call again like I think it was like a, it's, it's always weird it's always like a Tuesday night but um, I got the call I was up to like 11.30 with the coach from Wisconsin and he basically said Tyler listen there's nothing we can do now you can't come because I was getting a full ride scholarship, forty thousand dollars a year scholarship, and he said we can't give you that if you can't play, and if we need to give it to someone else. Somebody else is short of scholarship money here, so I basically said, all right, fair enough. Cried it off a little bit with my dad all night because it was another big hit to take. That Jesus just worked all that, went to America, and now I'm not going. So I basically stayed home for another year and worked every job under the sun just to get money. What's and some jobs? What's some jobs? Yeah, yeah, work? I, I worked. I worked in a, a bakery factory and learned an awful lot there. I think the turning point there was I was sitting next to a, a lady and they were all great people and they're just working class people, as I said. And right. I've been there for years, just making a living. And some people were there just to get some money, whatever. Some young people, a lot of, lot of, lot of middle aged or older people. And you don't, you don't care about this bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like, I just want to get out of here. Do you know what I mean? Every day I went in at seven thirty and finished at two thirty and ran home, and I was just like. I saw I speaking to a lady one day, just packing crackers as the line was going by, just like this. And then the, uh, the I said to the lady, so how long have you worked here then? And she said, oh, this will be my uh, me 39th year next oh, year. Oh, 39. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. I how need, old was I she? Need, I think she was, in <laughs> a, she was in her 60s. Yeah. Man. I said, I've got to get out of here. And Christmas come, it was like a temporary position. I left and um, 
think I'd, I didn't work too hard there, so they didn't even want me back in the end. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, that's the thing. But then, and after Christmas, I went and worked in a sales company in, in the city. And they were teaching me how to sell a credit card to people. We want, who wants mm. to buy a credit card on the street? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I worked for two weeks off commission and made no money whatsoever. And mm. this day and age, obviously running a company now, you learn how to sell yourself and sell and mm. learn, basically learn how to sell, I, I sell ice to an Eskimo sometimes. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. back then I was like, what am I doing here? And I worked there for two weeks and just sacked it off. I was like, I'm done. And then I went into another job, which one of my friends who were played for Morecambe with, he got a job there. And I said to him, hey, any jobs going? And he said, uh, yeah, I'll ask the manager. And the next day I started. Didn't even know what I was doing. I was handling people's pensions. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, was in, I was in an office in the city handling people's pensions and putting all the wrong information into the system. That is insane, yeah, so, dude. Sorry, yeah, to, some, sorry some, to whoever hasn't got a yeah. pension right yeah, now. Some old lady yeah. now is super broken yeah, Liverpool yeah. and it's all your fault, No, dude. no. And then I, I wound up at the end of the year then. It, was, it wasn't concrete that was coming back to America because I still needed to get that grade and needed to take my SATs again and go through all the system and all that. And... I just knew in the back of my mind, doing everything it takes to get back. I'm not staying here. I got, I, I love Liverpool, but it's not me anymore. And what does the visa really? situation look like from the like v- from, from England? From England, to here, yeah. it's you, you basically go through the student visas are like the the way everyone comes through, and then um, after that, like you go on. Like right now, I'm on a, a visa called an OPT, which is like a work visa that you do after you graduate. And I'm actually due to a, a touch wood apply to apply for my next visa, which is a, a pretty big time one in the next week. So hopefully that all comes through all right. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Awesome. Yeah, awesome, so awesome. so it's all, all all there really. And then that's that's my way of obviously event. Hopefully eventually leading to me yeah. to make me own and, green card. And you so, said um uh, Liverpool just wasn't you anymore. It's what did you, what did you mean? I, uh, by that? it's it's a difficult one to really explain, but as to put it into simple terms, I. I looked at, even even when I was at Morecambe, that's why I decided on a split decision to come over to America, even being so young uh, and known a week before. I looked at guys that were like a year or two older than me that were professionals, signed contracts, signed professional contracts, getting paid next to nothing. And I was like, <laughs> that's not me it's that. I, I don't, I don't want to be in, in that position. Yeah. Not really under making the, much, but also under the shirt. it's like a liability. It's nothing's concrete that you that you're gonna you're gonna get a contract the next year. And sometimes at that level, sorry, I'm trying to shake his hand. <laughs> I was wondering what you were doing. Just, <laughs> but uh, at that level, because it is the four, it was at the time they're in the third division now, fourth division in England. The youngsters aren't making too much, and it's not about money at that time. But then you don't get your housing paid for anymore because you're considered a professional. So you're traveling in and out every day. I got I was talking to a guy that I know, shout out to him, like I, I hope he's doing really well now. I haven't spoken to him for a few years, but he was at that level then. He was like he said to me like one day I seen him, he was like, Ty, professional soccer player and then broke. It's like wow. just got no money moving up and down. And he got released the next year. And I was like, Oof. that's not me. I was like, I'm I'm not doing that. And then you're ineligible to play in college for a lot of levels anyway, like NCAA, because you've been a pro. So and nowadays I think it's a bit different with all the stuff that's coming in with it, be able to get paid and all that stuff. Yeah. But I was like, I need education behind me. I want education behind me just to fall back on if anything else happens. And then again, uh, and then my goal still was to come over here, play in college and then go into the pros and didn't happen to, as, as well as I thought it was, of course. But I mean, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It's it's one of them. But, but And then now you feel like you would, this is your home. This yeah, is, yeah, this yeah, is what yeah we... for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that... Didn't think so when I first came here to Dalton. I was like, get me, crazy, out of me, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but, Oh so, yeah. So how do you how do you get into coaching? Like how do you? How oh, do actually, you... before before uh, we touch that subject, can you give me one second. Oh, um, after these messages, we'll talk about how he got into coaching. Okay. <laughs> the scenery looks exactly the same, except we have these pouches on the table. And why is that, Adon? Uh, this segment right here is brought to you by D Food Collab, located at three hundred one East Morris Street. Um, so thank you to D Food Collab and everybody there. You guys are beautiful people. Amazing food, uh, so, amazing drinks. So oh, you, it's like a Ziploc bag. You yeah. So Ty, I gotta, I, gotta, I need your help with this one, okay? Yeah, yeah. So we are gonna play guess the slang. We're gonna, oh, there we go. What's on top? Go for it. We like play a, guess the slang. So we're gonna need you. You're gonna quiz us. Yeah, yeah. On English slang or just terminology. Right, go. go for it. And so then you have to. What do we think? Ten out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> run that. Run that hey, one more hey, time. You know man. what? No. I, I'm not a big fan of the uh, mm. the stuff inside. The spicy. Yeah, the, yeah. Um, but since, I love spices, but, but it's since the, they are our sponsor, yeah. <laughs> but, you but, actually, but these are fantastic. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. Put it right there. Yeah. <laughs> explain I, it. Explain I, it. I, hey, when you when you're from Liverpool as well, I keep saying that, but we'll still drink it. Oh. <laughs> 
I remember yeah. when I was in Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> you were never in Liverpool. I wish, though. I wish. <laughs> that doesn't count, brother. One day, man, I, I think one of my dreams, man, watching a, a UFC fight out Explain there. the segment, yeah, man. Anyways, the segment, the segment brought to you by D-Food Collab. So you're going to tell, you're going to say an English slang or English terminology. Okay. And then we have to try to guess. Bazo, Bazo has it up. On oh, I'll go. Ba- Bazo has it up. Excuse me. So Bazo, Bazo has a couple of uh, words that he All right, got go from the English slang. Right. So this is an English one? Yeah. So this is a Liverpool one. Okay. Is it Liverpool yeah, yeah, or is it yeah. just English? Okay, we're going to guess yeah. first what we think it is. Go for it. Um, I think it has to do with spiders. Oh, like wait, spider webs? webs. This? Yeah. yeah. Wait, so you know what this means, Ty? Of course. Yeah. All right, man. Go I mean, on, have a few more I'll guesses. Say, webs. Webs. It means chump. Webs, I think it means like, oh, uh, it's just it's just like a couple of little like punks hanging out. All right, so Some when, webs. When, I, when I first come in, what did you say to me? Uh, I said, hey. Yeah, well, apart from that. You smell great. <laughs> Oh, you smell Oh, great. you said that as well, but what did you say about, you said what, about the shoes? Oh, oh nice, no. nice, nice shoes. shoes. You said nice uh, kicks there. That's what uh, they are. It's webs. Oh, oh, so nice in English, say, hey, where'd, you, where'd you get them webs from? Why? Yeah. yeah. Don't know. <laughs> don't know. Where does that come from? That's, that's you tell crazy. Me. Okay. That's hard. That's hard. Uh, you tell them. Like, what we got next? Where's it come from? Gobsmacked? Wasted. Gobsmacked. Wasted. Gobsmacked. Drunk. Um, um, I think that's what I think. Like drunk. Really I think drunk. I think you you got hit. Like you're like, oh brother, you got gobsmack last night. Gobsmack. <laughs> yeah. Something something to do with like being high. Have you heard this one? Is this is this yeah, common? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows all of these, man. He's British. Yeah. I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. Why are you testing him like he's not British? No, we, we did we did a prison tournament, a prison term one. Remember with uh, a guest before? Yeah, it's been a prison. prison. Okay, but the term they he didn't know some of the terms. Okay, so I just want to make sure that you do know. I don't yeah, know how uh, English these it's are. Shocked. You're shocked. I'm oh, gobsmacked. I'm shocked. That's something. You know? I'm, I'm gobsmacked, man. So gob is your mouth. So you're like, uh, you know what I mean? I'm shocked. Uh, gob yeah, yeah, yeah. Like someone smacked you in the mouth. Some, no, not 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 necessarily. But like, <laughs> like, like, no, like you're shocked. You know what I mean? The face, what you make when you when you're shocked. Give us, read this one for us. Oh, we don't, we don't. I mean, we say it, but we don't say it too much. Blime, blimey, blimey. We say, we say, God, God, blimey. It's like, okay, it's like, oh, oh, dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Oh, okay. Blimey. Yeah. Oh, blind me! Oh, goodness. goodness. Yeah. yeah. Vexed. Oh, I uh, that's, like, that's a that's oh, a proper. Uh, I feel yeah. like you got COVID, and they're like, "Yo, you no. got vexed or not?" <laughs> <laughs> are you? Uh, are you, are you vexed? Fami- are you familiar with the uh, Top Boy? Netflix. Oh uh, no, but but, but I've get, heard you'll it's really get good. a lot of these stuff on there. That's to be honest, that's a lot of a lot of my mates, a lot of the. Um, the more the, the black guys in England, that's what they say. That's oh, their lingo, okay. yeah. Oh, you're more like, vexed, street, like, like street, yeah, like street yeah. slang. Yeah, yeah. Right, what is basically, it? What do you, you guys think it is? Yeah, that's it's basically uh, when yeah, yeah, what it says. You're trying to make me angry. angry. I'm, yeah, you vexed. Or you get you get me vexed. Uh, yeah, something like that. Hard, hard, hard. Yeah, I don't use that too much. <laughs> like, I don't use it at all. All right, really. so now we're gonna guess you in some uh, Spanish ones. Okay. All right. So this is um, uh, Mexican, you know, whatever Mexican American. Yeah, yeah. Can you guess what naco? Naco. Naco means. I don't know. I've never even heard of you. Heard of that one? Yeah. No. Give us a really? Guess. That's. A... No, I haven't heard of that one. Give us a fair. guess. Give us a guess. What do you think? Naco. 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 It's like, yeah. oh man, that guy, bro. That's who Naco. That doesn't he's, help he's, you. I just realized that. He's, a, he's, a, so, I mean, he's an idiot, or what? Yeah, yeah. Or basically. Tacky. Yeah, um, tacky. Tacky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fresa. Fresa. That's kind of yeah. say it again. Fresher. That was kind of hot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Be like, oh yeah, you're fresh? you're a, you're a uh, is fresh. It fresh? Or, uh, a little is it bit. Niña fresa. So you nice looking? No. What? Basil he said, reveal. He said niña fresa, didn't he? Preppy. Preppy. Oh, kind of like, okay. like, like snobby. Oh, okay, okay. Like you dress up a little too much. Metiche. Metiche. Oh. Metiche. What does you know, it sound I, like? I, this is bad because you know, my girlfriend's Hispanic and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's yeah. probably called me a few under the... Under the back, like, <laughs> she's definitely called you yeah, Naco she, before, for yeah, sure. Yeah, There's no probably. way. Give us a guess. Give us a guess. Metiche. Metiche. <sighs> Sounds like machete a little bit, huh? Yeah, Sounds like machete. <laughs> the hard, these ones, like, these are harder than the English ones. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, no, English, I feel like it's just um, somebody that's nosy. Oh, okay, okay, your business. okay. Yeah, okay. always know the people's okay. business. Metiche. What are these Dominicans? But now these are Dominicans. All right, Tigre. Tigre. Oh, dude, actually, look this one. Me and Tanya looked this one up the other day. Well, <laughs> you guys got a guess too. I'm pretty sure it's just it's just like a it's a dude, it's a brother. Nah. I think it's like Tigre, isn't it? Like literally tiger. their thing for tiger. It's a tiger, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's like it's like a slang term. Different. Like you're a thug, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good thing you put it up there, brother. What is that? <laughs> Artu- Artura. Oh, oh, loco, tengo una Artura. 
Don't that doesn't help me, Kelvin. <laughs> I don't know. There's some context. That's you a got, sentence. I want a hartura. Una hartura. Give me a Wait. hartura. Is what he said. Hartura is like you ate too much. Okay. Like, yo, I'm super full. They want a hartura. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that's they're trying to say heart attack, but they right, just right, right, right. I'm gonna say this one. I'm gonna say this one in context. You ready? Diache loco. Diache. Diache loco. What do you think? Well, it's crazy something, yeah. <laughs> something, yeah. something like something oh, crazy. Yeah. Diache is like That's damn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. uh, thank you, hey, I, told, I told you we have stuff that people don't understand. Thank you, you know Defoe I mean? Collab. That's the connection. You're getting with me vexed. Yeah. You're getting me vexed right now. <laughs> nah, I got vexed. I got all three shots, brother. <laughs> oh, you're vexed. Yeah, I'm vexed. 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 Oh, man. All right. So, transition from player to coach. How does that happen? Basically, just I've I've always been a I was that type of player on the field. I got asked that when I went to the Peachtree Moba tryout. I think it's because I was very vocal. Um, I've always been like that since about fourteen, and I actually got told years and years before when I was in school by one of my teachers. He said, "You're going to be a teacher when you're older." Um, obviously, and you were like, "No way!" Well, I was like, "Nah, not a chance." Yeah. And then I said that to him when I went back and I was teaching in the school, and he said, "Teacher," but I really, really classed coaching with teacher or the style of coaching that I do as well, just because. You get onto that kind of terms and because it's private training, it's more or less you can get through to kids more. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As if like you're in a classroom type environment rather than they just come to practice and leave. But I uh, I think I, I really found a, found a love for it once. I, th I think it was the beginning of Dalton State really. And they used to have camps coming in and stuff to like the, the college and we used to go ahead and coach. And I remember like the assistant coach at the time, one time everything just went tits up. There was too many kids in the camp. And, at at uh, Dawn State? Yeah, they yeah. They used to do like camps for the, the like day camps for the uh, the elementary schools okay. that come over for like so an hour the, or so. So the, the college players would yeah, like yeah, have camps with the but, younger kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think because I was that type of player in like trying to lead everyone and just trying to like organize and vocalize people, you know what I mean? And the, I think we went there one day and he's like, hey, Ty, we need you quick. I come from a class. I was running onto Lakeshore's field. He's like, hey, sort all this out. And within like 10 seconds, I had all the kids sorted. And he's like, hey, you're a good coach here, aren't you? And should get into that. And I really went to school for physical therapy. I went to school mm. pre-physical therapy and then went ahead and did all my studies for it, applied to grad school and all that stuff. And I knew deep down one day that I got involved in a gym as well around here that I used to do a few classes for and all that, that really taught me the ways from working with alongside so, a few what, people. What, gym here? It's called Culprit Athletics, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I trained there and obviously I was an athlete there, trained all the time and then coached classes for them there. And I really got into it then and worked alongside some phenomenal coaches and obviously the mindset side of it and just what they did it for and all that. And still really good friends with them today. But I uh, that, that was then really. And obviously because I was <laughs> soccer oriented, I was like, once I'm able to, I want to start my own company one day that, of does, doing does, this. like facilitate yeah. soccer and mm -hmm. obviously performance training and all that stuff and I think just being a fitness kind of fanatic myself I got through all the performance training and went to school for that side of stuff so it was more like the science behind everything and that's why I started tying that in with mine so my kind of whole business plan when I started Shankly Lee training was to put a different side of of soccer training together that nobody else does and it wasn't just coming and scrimmaging with the kids for an hour. It wasn't just <laughs> running through cones with balls. It was it was really doing all the necessary kind of physiolog physiological stuff with them through their speed, strength, all that stuff. And then also getting the mental side involved with it. And obviously, because I'd went through a lot of stuff as an athlete myself there, I was like, just relate my, my background and my story back to it. And then I went home a couple of years ago in the summer and did a lot of coaching over the summer in Liverpool. And I took that side of me back home as well. And I always had fears, to be honest, when I went back home. If I ever, if life ever led me back home, even though I had all the education behind me now, I always thought, what if I have to go back to packing crackers in the factory again? <laughs> yeah, fear, I, had, I had literally had nightmares about it's it. I, fear, was like, I think it's yeah. fear of being broke again. Yeah, yeah. You always have that. Do you know what? And to be, to be honest, that as well, but I, I couldn't care less about the money. Do you know what I mean? I just, mm. it's like what I'm doing in Some the moment. Kind of purpose. To it. Yeah, yeah, the purpose yeah. behind it all. And then I, I went home and coached. And even then they were like, yeah, you're a different style of coach, you know? Like, and there's a lot of people coming from the world now that are, that are doing coaching to that extent and that's why I just picked little points off all of them and so then like, and, and so then when do we Shankly Elite last June basically official last June LLC. Launched, launched the business yeah and I, I uh, to be honest I, I knew that it was gonna be successful to an extent just because of the work that I put in and of course you've got to know that do you know what I mean you can't yeah. go into something like this might or might not work and in my situation because I, I literally got like a one-year work visa to to prove my company is so essential and what I'm doing is essential. Mm. 
that I had to make it work. When mm-hmm. it, when it's a case of having to, you make it work. Do you know what I mean? And I uh, I went ahead and started in the summer, and I expected it to get traction just because I've had that, I'd been training on like a couple of fields myself, and had a lot of people look over and say, "Oh, what are you doing that side of training? Can can we get involved?" And I was God, like, "Anybody that sounds yeah. like that too, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah." The voice I'll, played the part. Yeah, they I'll, were basic. I'll let him coach me. Dude, yeah, they were know? like, "Yeah, hey, you're from England. You should know what you're doing." And yeah, stuff. But, but I, after that, I was I was like, "All right." Well, I said I kept saying to him, "Hey, we're launching a company in the summer. Come and join some sessions. Come and have a go. Like, you got to pay for it and all that." And I was like, "Well, yeah." I was like, it's it's a business now. Mm. I was like, we've got to pay for it. And obviously that's how I support myself as well, yeah, as well I mean, as everyone and else. And it's always kind of weird, like, you know, telling people that. Yeah, I feel like of course. They want to be like, oh, what do you do? But I'm like, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it could be like us, like with this podcast, you know, you come in yeah. or whatever, but you know, we still, we need to keep the lights on. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. none of this no, is free. of course. Exactly. You know what I'm and the, so like, it's kind of, yeah. you have to understand I'm like, and I feel like people that really would support you yeah. don't understand. I'm like, no, like I'm yeah. trying to, yeah. this is my job. Oh yeah, for sure. And and to be honest over, it, it really, people took onto that quick and they were like, well, it's not just a guy now just training people for the for the sake of it. It's a legit company that they need to fund stuff. He buys all this equipment. He, he some, Somehow he needs to fund that. And I spent a, a small portion on the equipment at first and a small portion that a lot of business have to spend a lot more to get yeah, their businesses right. going. And, yeah, and then, and you have to eat. Like you're yeah, not working. Yeah, yeah, of course. People, I feel like people might not understand that. It's like, bro, I don't have time to do other things. Yeah, I, yeah. So I don't have the time to like, you know, have like pay my bills. Oh yeah. I got to eat. I want to, you know, pay all these other uh, stuff I have to do. Definitely. So. Definitely. So that's why I think that was the, the, the difficult thing at the start was getting a really strict policy and people yeah. to stick to it. And obviously cause it was all legit. They had to stick to it by signing waivers, by doing all mm-hmm. this, by following every same terms and conditions, what they had to do. And as I said, as time went by, that summer was huge. Like, we gained so many kids very, very fast. And I think it's because it was the summer, it was a perfect time to start it. Right. Um, so after that, it was like Dalton-based kids at first. And then we had Calhoun kids getting interested. Really? I have kids coming from Cleveland, Chattanooga all the time. And they're kids that have really stuck with as well. They really, the parents believe what we're doing is, is good for the kids. And obviously that's why we do it. But um, then we've run, we've, we've run four camps now already in, in, in the space of nine months and almost every one of them sold out. So, so how long is like, the camp? The camp, well, we started five-hour camps at first and they were like two or three-day camps. But now because the five weather- Five hours a day? F- five hours for two days. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But, but me, it was 14 hours a day. Oh, So boy. all the other coaches had come and they did a phenomenal job helping out and doing their part. But that's what I said. After like the first or second camp, I was like, I've got to get someone on board to help me plan these things because- I was like, nobody in the history of doing a camp like this plans it on their own and does everything. And mm. I was so drained. Mm. And for the last two before the one we ran last week, it was only a three-hour one in the morning. I didn't even do the high school camp because of all the school seasons going on. So you didn't have but, no helpers at all? It was just no, you no, on the I had, field? I had helpers on the field, okay. but they come and coached and left. Do you know what yeah, I mean? And right. did their job, what they what they were required to do. But all the planning, all the contacting parents, all the t-shirts, promoting. all the promoting, all the promoting it, all, all the food orders, because I think that's why the kids come, because we provide Chick-fil-A at the end of the camp all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you but know yeah. what? When's the next camp, man? Yeah. I know, yeah. Well, just, I got a few, just, 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 I got a few, right got a few points left on my account there to get some Chick-fil-A. But. Dude, we actually had an idea, man, that uh, maybe for a future vlog, man, you should uh, give us a, we should go to your camp, man, maybe oh, like, yeah, maybe yeah. run with the kids, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah, I was thinking, like, you know, like, run us through the ringer yeah. you know would like like go us through give us the whole just yeah. stand yeah. there and be you and your shankly shirts mm-hmm. and you'll be all right just just keep it pg well no no i mean yeah, I, I, no. I mean like you train us you train us oh, okay. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. put us through uh, it, you know yeah, what i'm saying that, that'd be nice that'd be funny to be fair like that. that'd be great if you want to do that in the next couple of weeks let's yeah. get it on because i've been so. kind of looking for like an easy oh, workout like, maybe a couple <laughs> months I, I, you know? I did come up to you in the gym the other week expecting you to come and join in my workout and you just kind of blanked it off you said you were leaving you said like when i say i'm leaving that means half an hour later i've still got like 10 more things to do he said he's like they looked at me he's like i'm terrified there's way too many big people I'm going home. <laughs> that's what Ty said. I said word for word. No, you, but you enjoy working out? Oh yeah, yeah. That's really? what I said. And people have looked at us in the gym because I, I used to train with a guy called Dean Haynes in the gym. That was like me workout partner. Me and him just go hand in hand. Just bro, and I, and I said you go, you, you go hard in the gym. Yeah, like it's just different just, types of stuff. Imagine and, you're over there. What? <laughs> just, I wasn't there. That was the well, day I was in the Zumba class. <laughs> no, but I was saying, like, I could tell you do more of the yeah, high intensity yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not it's, doing the basic bro lifts. Yeah, of course. I, I just moved away from that, I think, because what I do is very, very kind of hands on with mm-hmm. me coaching. I've got to be, and we've be, I've always been a big a big fan of, I'm a big advocate of practice what you preach. Mm-hmm. And if I can't do it, if I, I can't do the other side I, of it. How are you going to look like? Yeah. You're, you're, you know, 300 no, pounds. Know, and you're going to tell me to yeah, run God. harder? But you do get it. You get that in yeah. sort of training you do, environments. You and you're like, what are them kids or what are them parents paying that person for? Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's it's not to say they don't know nothing about soccer, because they probably do. 
But in a private training environment, it's completely different. Yeah. Like you got to be able to move and do your thing, but to do it with the kids. But, but yeah, that was the that was the thing. And like you that. said, you're doing it like, you know, you know, there's a three hour whatever three hour camp. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. you have another one coming. Yeah, and so, then you got to do another. So you know. yeah, the, for the past two, the Thanksgiving one and the um, the, the the end of year one, I come back. Like she come back from England on the 28th. Not twenty ninth, rested up, still jet legged, and ran a camp for twelve hours on the thirtieth. That's crazy. And I was tired, but it was like, you know what? Let's get through this. It's it's for the kids at the end of the day, and it, it's 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 great on the business side as well. Do you know what I mean? You got right. to think of that. But I just I was I was on the field from eight thirty nine till eight thirty nine at night, and I just stayed at the wow. field all day and just ordered food in. Is it always a different field, or do you practice? We, we in the regularly same? right now we regularly use the new Heritage Soccer Complex by Parkery Elementary, and we also use the uh, Dalton High School field. We've been pre- pretty fortunate to be able to use that. To be honest, That's just awesome. with my connection with with right. the school. But good, good. I think one day but, yeah. we saw you at the Riverbend one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always used to use that. The only thing about it, it's a bit out the way. So it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 in town, but I'm like, nah, it's too out the way. I'd rather be a little bit more local round mm-hmm. round the area. Yeah, we did a we did a soccer game there actually yeah. uh, oh, for, last oh, year with with the uh, with the southeast. Yeah, yeah. 20, oh, I, I was I was there. Yeah, I was there. I was yeah. I was giving uh, a few of the the seventeen guys stick for like. <laughs> <laughs> so how'd you uh, how'd you end up coming up with the name uh, Shankly? It's actually my middle name. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Uh, my dad was a. a you realize big... in America, Shank is like. Sh- yeah, yeah, it is in Liverpool right? as okay, well. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it is in Liverpool. <laughs> but, but my uh, my dad was uh, obviously always been a huge Liverpool fan. Because that's like OG Shankly. Yeah, right? yeah. So Shankly was the original coach that got yeah. Liverpool to reach it, really the club and the 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 thing that it is today. And um, he was the coach in the sixties and seventies when my dad was a kid, and obviously got them to where they needed to be at the top of the game, and just an absolute legend there and. He decided to call me Tyler Shankly Hudson. So I thought when I was starting the name, name yeah, that was well, he knew uh, he knew you were playing soccer. <laughs> he knew. I started the when I was thinking about names and logos. I was going back and forth with Jordan as well about all the logo stuff and wondered that's why it all come up. I'll explain the logo to you in a minute as well of what all of it means. Mm-hmm. But I uh, I come up with the name, of course, with my middle name as far as that goes. And also I said to someone one day, "What would you think, Hudson Elite Training or Shankly Elite Training?" It was actually the lady who looked after us in the college for the uh, academic advisor stuff. And she was like, there's plenty of Hudson's in America type. There's no, sh- no Shankly's. Oh, and I was true. like... And I was very like, well known. I feel yeah. like from English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, like, first thing I look up, Shankly, was that. Yeah, was, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just got a photo sent today. My me, me, me mum's friend just tagged me in. They're on a, like a weekend away and they've all got the Shankly shirts on. <sighs> uh, like nice. taking photos. Beautiful. So that's it was awesome. a nice thing to see. But, but yeah, that's the way I thought of it. And I was like, that's true. And t- to be honest, the amount of people that have asked me, hey, what's Shankly? Mm. And it gets them interested straight away, and it's almost like a selling point to come to sessions. And they're like, hey, that's what it is. Like, come on, come on board, and all that stuff. So it was like that. That was I was like, yeah, stick with it. And then, uh, as I said, the logo stuff, and I put a little bit of a different mountain on it because the um, I couldn't get a picture of the North Georgia mountains, but yeah. it was obviously the U.S. flag, the Great Britain flag, the the mountain for like North Georgia the 90, to resemble. What, what the ninety-seven, and then the 97 is actually part of Liverpool Football Club as well it was a disaster back in 1989 where this is Great Britain? yeah yeah no the other side of it okay but I was like, this is definitely United yeah States. yeah the United States <laughs> in Britain but the um, there was a disaster in like a semi-final where the uh, ni- originally 96 Liverpool fans including kids of like 10 years old got crushed and died in the stadium oh, okay. By the uh, the cops letting too many people in, and obviously wow. it was a semi final, so everyone wants to go in. And there was a big thing about it all over all over Great Britain with the prime minister and the government, and hence why a lot of Liverpool people don't support the government a lot because of that reason, and because of a lot more reasons that they tried to really, really throw the city into into the dirt years mm-hmm. before and even today. But the ninety seven with the fans, one more died years later from obviously just brain injuries wow. and um, causes from that. And the uh, yeah ninety seven, it's ninety seven fans, so. It hit home and I thought I'm putting it inside the soccer ball just yet. for the thing. That's so, dope, that's dope. Yeah, and that's a lot of people ask about that as well. What's 97? Is that the year you were born? I was like, no, nah, I'm a 95, but that's <laughs> that's what it is. But You ever play in soccer and you just want to pick it up on the ground and just throw it? <laughs> like instead of kicking it, you're like, you know what? This, is, this would be so much easier if I just pick it maybe, up. Maybe if I'm maybe you know? angry, angry at someone, I've done, you know? that, I've done that on a few throw-ins in the past, just threw it at the back of someone's I head. But. I know we uh, are. I get frustrated playing soccer, yeah. dude. I'm like, why can't I just? I just want to pick the ball up and just yeah, throw yeah. it. Dude. I feel like hand-eye coordination has to be the, like the best in soccer. To do yeah. something with your feet is like kind of crazy. Oh, like, oh, when you see like those little videos where they're doing yeah. tricks and yeah. shit. Different athletes, I'm telling you. Like, oh, yeah, I think they are you, different. You get animals. so many different athletes, like football players. And I mentioned my friend before, Dean Haynes. He's a phenomenal athlete. Uh, played college football, played through Northwest High School here. And just one of the best athletes I've seen like, in person, me and him just working together, just knowing his, his knowledge and how he can move around, the power that he has. 
put a soccer ball at his feet, he looks like Bambi on ice. It's crazy. <laughs> like, it's, like it's, it's, it's madness. And I'm like, wow, so much control over your feet. Yeah, and then you, you put a ball and you're like, wow. Just lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. definitely but need to get to your students, he, huh? He'll let me say that as well. He knows, he knows <laughs> it's the truth. But, but it's the same with me with like a football in my hands. I'm like, I can catch a ball, but then to throw it, it's all over the place. Yeah, and, nah, really yeah. yeah. It sounds like such a coach statement. Hey, you look like Bambi on ice yeah, out there, yeah, yeah. bud. Hey, believe me, I, I love my kids to death that are coach, but I've had a few of them over the over the past years that have come um, like here, here, there, and everywhere, like recently and stuff that I've been like, wow, Bam Bambi on ice. But, then, <laughs> that, but that's why they come, do you know what I mean? They come yeah, to get better. Yeah, better, better. That's where, you can be better and then just keep getting... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, where, that's what I really specialize in as well, all like the stabilization movements and like of the speed. That's why... It's, it's a different side of it, as I said before, and they learn really quick how to do that side of it. You know what I mean? It's good. It's good to see the progression with it as well. Okay. I have a uh, random question just for my, yeah, my yeah, own yeah. Uh, personal, <laughs> uh, personal um, you know, inquiries, yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, I, one of my favorite movies um, is Green Street Hooligans okay. with Charlie Hunnam. Yeah, have you yeah, ever seen yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Plenty of times. How accurate would you say that is to, you know, like as far as like the football clubs and stuff on, like that? On the money. On the money, really? on the money, yeah, it's one hundred percent accurate. There's so many hooligans in Liverpool, in, in Liverpool, in England. Yeah, um, Liverpool have the side of it. Not big fanatics for it, but there's like the uh, like in in Green Street is West Ham, yeah, and it. But then they have Millwall, which are their rivals and all that stuff. And then they have obviously Chelsea. Uh, there's an old school one called the Football Factory. You had that many years really? ago. That's like that, but exactly the same. It happens. And my dad was actually in that side of it where because it was years before the hooliganism started. And it was years. That's all he went to the game for. To, they were outside. these fights with everyone. So yeah. I, uh, a little bit of context for people that don't know Green Street. Can you kind of describe, I guess, Green Street Hooligans? It's, or just that, it's that. basically the, the side of the football fans that just go to the game, that want to go to the game to watch it, but want to go to cause trouble and fight. Yeah. And it's a lot worse in like your, your Eastern European countries and Ukraines and all them. And like they literally, like whatever, grown, whatever just, to, just to wreak havoc. Whatever club, yeah. like, like whatever, like whatever soccer, you yeah. know, club or excuse me, football club, like they're supporting. Literally go just to fight the other people. Sounds yeah. like gangs. It's so, almost. So it's, yeah. it's like the FBF going to a bar. No, yeah, but it's just like it's like it's like like almost gangs. Like like, like yeah. as far as like a basically. Yeah, but would they fight is. the people on the other team, or they yeah. just yeah, like yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Fight, basically meet up in an alleyway and start fighting before and after the game, and gets pretty gruesome to be honest. As you're seeing on Green Street, mm. what do you what do you think? Like fighting is such a big part of like England, or what? Just just like the UK in general. <sighs> Couldn't tell you, just we're all lunatics, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> it's literally, we have a team here in America called the Fighting Irish, bro. What's like, that? The Notre Dame? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Like, why Why do you think, like, that part of the, the world is so synonymous, like, <laughs> with fighting, bro? It's, uh, to be honest, it, it probably goes back, and I'll have my dad correct me if I'm wrong with this. I always, I mentioned my dad, he's, like, obviously the guy who got most of my wisdom from, if you like. The man, the man. Like, right. My mum is the sweetheart. Yeah, and, Paul. Yeah, my mum's the sweetheart of the family that, that supported me no matter what. And my dad always supports me, but he'd tell me, when I did right and wrong and even if I did right he'd say I did wrong he's like you need to be better at that do you know what I mean and my mum when I, when I really did wrong my mum would tell me and I, and I was like oh shit I did wrong then. Right. do you know what I mean but, but yeah it's it's part of the um, it was like a religion thing I faced in Ireland and it's it's uh, Catholics and Protestants and that all started years and years before and it was, it was to, I don't even know what was to do with but I know to this day it's still not as bad as it was but it still happens and I remember being in in like a social club type of bar with my parents when I was a kid in Ireland in Belfast and um, or the bar owner said, everyone get inside, get inside. And at the time, I didn't know what was going on. And years later, my parents told me, oh, it was supposed to be a drive-by outside and he's wow. going to get everyone inside. But that was all that and it was just fight, fight, fight. And just crazy, constantly. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a hard, it's a hard life growing up and you, you have to know. As I said before, you know how to play soccer, you know how to do something good or you, you, have, to, you have to know how to fight. And you have to be smart. As I said, it's like you're smart or you know how to fight. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's the, there's no in-between sometimes and it's crazy. And as I said, that's why we mix in with like the Hispanic culture a lot because it is, it is similar cultures as far culture, as I know. Yeah. People, so yeah. as I said, it's, 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 it's that side of it. And um, yeah, my area where I grew up, that's what a lot of people I was at. Was that like a, one of my younger boys who were training in the summer when we first started up? He invited me to his birthday party and a few more parents were there and they were just talking to me, like general talk and, they asked me like obviously where I was from and stuff and explained what, what happened and when I grew up and what it was like to grow up and it wasn't, I didn't have a hard upbringing, you know what I mean? I had, my parents were really hard working people that made sure I had what I needed but right. the area where I live and it's it's like a rougher area, do you know what I mean? And you get by, you, it's just life. You don't know any different but it, from an outsider it'd be like, you're like oh, You wow. kind of look back, you're like, yeah, wow, that yeah. was actually... Yeah, yeah. A, f a few years ago, I um, it was at Christmas and there was me... My two friends, I was like, I was one of them kids growing up as as uh, as we said before, it was like 
just being obviously my dad's obviously a mixed race but I always took in everybody do you know what I mean it was like yeah. no matter what race and religion you're at it's, you're good with me right. and um, a lot of like the I wouldn't say I was going to say African American and African English side of it and obviously um, and everything else it's it's a very multicultural city in, in, a, in Liverpool and I remember being walking the streets with one of the guys who actually lives in Atlanta, my friend who I played soccer with back home, who went to, used to go to Georgia State and is doing really well for himself now in Atlanta. His name's Junior. Um, he's made a friend in Atlanta as well, black guy. And there was another one of our guys back home who played uh, played soccer with us, another black guy. We walked down my, my the road where I'm from, and it was like a main road, a few bars, restaurants, all uh, shops, all that stores. And it's not like a highly... Um, it's it's multicultural but you don't get a lot of black guys living in that area it's mm. more like the south end of the city so I was like alright well walking down the streets I'm the only technically white guy with them and there's this guy who must be in about five foot six hood up dressed in black just we call Tall. them we call them scallies ho- thugs what they are scallies uh-huh. are thugs and in America that's what this guy said afterwards we walked past them he didn't look at me he looked at every black guy that was six foot two plus <laughs> up and down like who are you yeah, and he was on his own and then we walked past and the guy who was from Atlanta who come over to England for that Christmas period said Ty never been so scared of a white guy in my life <laughs> he was like in America if I walk past someone I'm not an intimidating guy I'm a good guy but people get intimidated just yeah. because they call me skin and it's sad to say that you know what I mean but it's crazy, the reality yeah. of it he was like that guy didn't give a shit and I was yeah. like hey you're in Liverpool on a rough street mate he doesn't care yeah. you know and I was like that's where you know it's like wow but he was like yeah it's like that's what it's like around here but as I said you learn it's just what you what you what where you're from and you don't know any difference you grow up there and I go home and see different sides of it now and it's it's getting bad it's getting bad around there even worse than it was when I was growing up wow. and my parents were growing up and it's just suits too many idiots around and yeah. it's everywhere in the world but it's it's a it's a tough subject to touch on and so okay then um I guess we'll get to a little more romantic topic. You and now a I uh, love you. No, no, no. Thank you though. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But uh, uh I've been uh, waiting three seasons to say that. Uh three seasons. Girlfriend. <laughs> and I know yeah. she is Hispanic. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So how was how did that come into fruition? Because you say you've yeah, been with my, her for uh, uh, yeah, two a couple years of now. years. Yeah, I've known her for two and a half years. But me um it was one of actually one of one of our old roommates at college. He was it's like friends or dating a girl at the time that was her friend. And obviously she's from Atlanta, but the girl who, who was who was here was from Dalton. And she basically introduced us one day and we we kind of just hit it off and um, got talking over the next few months. And then before you knew it, it was a thing. And as I said, she's got a little boy as well. Um, he's he's like a, a star, you know what I mean? I I obviously think of him as almost my own now. It's it's one of them Aww. things. But yeah. But, uh, but yeah, he's 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 great. He's he's a nutcase. He's wild, but he's he's <laughs> great just to so it's how, like the thing. How was the, the culture barrier as far as like um, me and her parents? Have they met have she yeah, met yeah, yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She met mine, I've met his. Um and I, I know the Hispanic culture is a little bit different. You take a little bit longer to she, meet the she females. Me- Mexicans? Parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, in England, we don't really care. And it's not like you'd introduce them straight away, but y- you know you know when it's time. It's not as serious. Yeah, yeah. It's not so, as like, this is a big well, deal. Yeah, when you know it's a little bit more serious, that's when you start introducing them. But uh, unless like it is just a fling that you're like, hey, mum, this is such and so, see you later. And they're gone the next day. Do you know what I mean? But right. uh, but when you know it's a little bit more serious, like, hey, mum, this is my girlfriend now and all that stuff. And uh, But yeah, it's it, as I said, the, the personality is mixed. And then the, uh, obviously when I introduced the parents and I met her parents, I think it, she was a bit more kind of nervous for me to meet her, meet her parents because I was from England. I was I wasn't Hispanic, and um, I think because I've dealt with so many Hispanic parents through coaching, mm-hmm. I'm very comfortable with it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Through the language barrier, it's fine. All right, I'll sit there, and even though I don't know what they're saying, it's fine. And then a lot of them smile, do speak smile, English. Smile, smile yeah, yeah, just like, yeah. Her <laughs> grandmother loves me. A grandmother loves me because I try, I try and speak Spanish the best to them mm. as I can. But then I just like I, I, I'll. I'll be just a normal person there. I won't be like just reserved, like sitting there and I'll float around talking to everybody. And I think it is just the, the personality what I have that's that's helped me along that way as well. Um, I, in the culture, ch- differences and changes through it. So, and I think they, they then a, a little bit more seeing the way I was with the little guy as well that they were like, oh, he's all right, he's legit. That's beautiful, brother. Yeah, What's so. your favorite uh, Mexican food, dude? Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't mind a good, uh, good torta, you know. Good torta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carne asada, right? Yeah, Fire. yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. Oh, One go, of them. Go. I uh brother. Where we at, Bazo? You said you had some stories so, for us. Yeah, I want to hear. Yeah. I want to hear a story before. And we I get got out a couple here. other um okay questions too. But I mean, but I would, I would love to hear one of your one of your stories. Gotta get the subject first. That, oh, well, well, yet, I, yeah. I I just wanted to, uh, to, know to ask you about by this time it will air. I think will roughly maybe it will be the rematch of Leon Edwards and Kamaru Usman. Yeah. 
What do you think is going to happen there? And what do you think of the the that the second fight. fight that he had? Yeah, it was. I think uh, obviously Usman was was killing him, weren't he? And Leon just come out of nowhere with the head kick there. But who knows? It just it's way the way they prepare for it at the end of the day now, isn't it? They know each other. Because I feel like I see um, ten. I feel like it shouldn't go now. Usman just should be more wary of. Oh it, yeah, I feel of course like. he'll be blocking their head kicks all the time. Yeah, but yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you. And what about uh John Jones coming back? Um next you know week? what? I, I'm not I'm not I wouldn't even watch it. I'm not a big fan of John Jones, Jones fan. Yeah, that, I'm yeah, not, you not, fucked not up too many fan. times, but yeah, not that I'm a, not a fan, I just I'm not interested in it. Like and So yeah. who who is someone you are just, as far as oh actually, you know, give me your five MA goats. Now let the people know. But I know yeah, Bisping's one of them. Yeah, I have got a new one come in there just to respect what he aimed for him the other week. But it's obviously Bisping being English. Right. I think uh, obviously Till being from the area where I'm from and all that stuff, it's he started for that area. Right, right, right. Um, this I can't isn't ju- a- I'm not just going to say them because they're from Liverpool as well because Paddy's decent, but I wouldn't put him in the go go thing. Do you know what I mean? He's not that not that type yet. Um, obviously, you've got. I mean, McGregor just started the thing, didn't he? You know what I mean? Yes. You can't go any better than, you're, you're than what he's like. You're a casual <laughs> yeah, Ty. Yeah. You no, are but, a casual. But then, yeah, bring but me, the, uh, but bring the, me but, a proper 12. But, uh, but, no, but, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we're going to get some in a minute. But the, uh, the Volk. Vulcan Oxford. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, Vulcan Oxford. I respect, he's, that's one he's I respect got a lot on of respect your list. For it there and, <laughs> one and of four. Oh, yeah. Not bad. O- obviously, Khabib. Yeah. Oh, okay. Khabib. Yeah, yeah. I Khabib. think McGregor's just a go because what he did for it and just. Yeah, and, and I feel like. You, you got, I mean, you know, people love to hate on uh, McGregor nowadays, yeah, but yeah. people forget what he did. Yeah. Like, well, the way he was coming up and the way he was doing it and what he has opened for other people. Yeah. Respect. But, you know, greatest of all time as far as, like, you know, just fighting, I wouldn't give him that. Probably but. best UFC uh, businessman of all time, dude. No, oh, for yeah, sure. For he sure. was, bro, he was Forbes list, like, number two or one. Yeah. Right? Whatever, like, a couple years ago. Yeah. That's mad. That is mad. No, that's it, yeah. But, but yeah, as far as the uh, far as the stories go, what do you want to know? Oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> give me some, something. One of the most English stories you have. One of the most, you would not hear a story like that in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, that's risky, that one, to be fair. Yeah. I, um, yeah I, or young, something young, maybe a high school story or, like, I'm trying to think now. It's like when, you put first, me on the spot. when you first came over here, like, anything crazy happened? Or Do you like, know what? I'll give you the story that, that'll obviously be a little bit more. I mean, Jordan, no, but he wasn't even in the country at the time. But <laughs> our, uh, he went home for the summer. And our first first summer here, basically, we we come to Dalton State. We we had, obviously, the, we had the soccer players here. It was the first team at Dalton State to play. So I think the basketball team with the, with the number one guys winning the national championship the year before, as soon as the soccer team come in, they got wiped out. Like, everybody wanted to know who you were and... Not that it was like the biggest thing in the world, but it was it was Dalton, the new soccer. And it was like, yeah, these are the soccer team now. So just a lot of international students, to be honest, through all the teams, like tennis and all that. And we formed a good like friendship with all of them. And I don't think Dalton State being a smaller school, we threw some parties in our apartment. We had two DJs in an apartment. Don't know how, we, how we did that, but yeah. We, in we, a flat? I, yeah, in an apartment, in the legacy apartment. We, yeah, uh, we had flats. that. Yeah, That's yeah, my yeah. Bad, brother. The flat, the English <laughs> team, but... We did that and then we <laughs> we just threw parties week after week and all we did was just kept going like, ah, we're going to have another one tonight. Send a Snapchat story out straight away. And before we knew it, there was like 80 people at the apartment. And we're like, where have all these people just come from? We were in Kroger getting beers. That's the thing with, with an English thing. I know in the American terms, like bring your own beer. We didn't understand that, did we? It was like, uh, yeah. It was like we provide the beer. We, we had no money whatsoever. We just put like oh. thirty, forty dollars together. So you're hosting together. it. You're bringing. Oh, yeah, okay. we provided this. So everyone just used to come. Was like, yeah, this is this is awesome. Let's go. We get it. And uh, yeah, we had a few on the bounce, and then the the last one that we had, it was the only one that got shut down, and it was because we had two DJs playing. The DJ brought us speakers and everything, and then we were like, all right, let's get it. Like we're. Uh, let's let's see how this one goes. And the floor was rattling in the apartments. There how was, big? Okay, so how big was this apartment that you could you could have two DJs? To in the be same fair, apartment? I don't even know. How, but it was probably one of the rooms was the size of this. That's yeah. crazy. Wow. But we had one on one side, huge. and then another one was the other side. Was one like playing yeah. like hip hop? Yeah, one it was exactly EDM another EDM. Yeah, and the other <laughs> one was hip hop. <laughs> we had another one in the bedroom that was playing reggaeton. Yeah, but, that's insane. But, but that was, no, this is me winning an Alexa. Yeah, that so, was it. No, the one time we're all sitting here, and it was no knocking, nothing at the door. And we just seen who's that guy there in, in between the whole crowd? It's just a cop just standing there, just, just waiting. <laughs> wow! And she's like, everyone get out! And it was like a concert coming down the stairs in the apartments. So like we were all like underage as well, twenty mm. years old. He was twenty one. I was like, all right, well, it's my apartment, but if if, if they say to us, "You've been drinking," let's leave as well. So we're like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> so we all left our own place, and then a few months down the line, we're just obviously the summer's going by and all that, and we're ready for the college season to come back up again and start our sophomore year or whatever. 
and got a call one day. I was actually out of town and uh, I seen it on Snapchat before anything. It just shows how, how dumb some people are not to even tell you. Our apartment was on fire. What? So, what? Yeah, we, uh, we, I was like, what's going on there? And then I had a bunch of texts from a load of people in Dalton. I hope you're okay. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm fine, I, bro. I called one of the guys yeah. like, what's going on? He's like, he was like crying as I, Ty, it's all gone, bro. He's the only like American oh, guy. Oh, it's like a real all. fire. Yeah, yeah. The I think, man, like, yo, the apartment no, was on fire. No, 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 the, the apartment First of all, was you, smoking up. Can yeah. you do that American accent again? Which one? When it's Just, can I hear oh, your American it's, it's accent? It's all gone, bro. It's all gone. But he was like, it's all gone. I was like, what do you mean? It's all gone. He was like, the apartment, it's on fire right now. So like, the, obviously we get there and all our apartments is just black. Everything is ruined. Damn. Is it, uh, is yeah. it the apartments next to Don State? Yeah, the, well, the, you know, that's the car can you, it's the legacy around the corner. But oh, if yours is on fire, happen? like the others, so must have it been was on fire ours, too. the top one on, on, along with that was connected. The other ones just had water damage because they sprayed the whole roof and it went through the through the oh. ceiling. And wow. yeah, we uh, I went the back and just we were trying to get bits out, it just wasn't happening. Luckily enough, for me, like passports and all that stuff was in like a, a metal, like a steel drawer oh. that it was fine. But I was like, what the hell just happened there? We were, we were homeless. Wow. And yeah, we we went for about a week and a half, two weeks with nowhere to live. We were just sleeping on people's couches from our teammates and stuff, and didn't know what to do. The apartment didn't give us nothing back whatsoever. Nothing at all. Yeah, yeah. Apparently the uh, they the, had guy, no insurance. The, the, the guy the guy who sorted our place supposed to be supposed to be our coach mm. said um, said that uh, that we didn't have he didn't get renters insurance when he put the name down for it. Huh. Wow. So it shouldn't make no difference because it wasn't our fault. But so, how did the how did the fire even start? Some electrical wires in the in the wow. uh, in the in the ceiling that went off or something and. That was it. We were like, "What the heck?" So we had nothing, and basically just had to start again. And to be honest, if I knew that, if I knew the people that I knew now around here, we wouldn't end up owning the place just by suing the yeah. place just because yeah. they screwed yeah, yeah. us over that Absolutely. much. Because you know me now. Yeah, yeah. He's As a lawyer. Said, He's actually no, a lawyer. I know. That's what I mean, and, and that's why I'm trying to get <laughs> it out on this podcast so we can go back <laughs> yeah. and get it. You know, we get some money with it. But, but yeah, right. that that was one of the stories uh, I being know, here. I know you said top UFC goats, but you know this is obviously a soccer based podcast, yeah. so. Top five soccer goats, and then well, I guess we get out of here, right? Yes, Boom. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So number one, obviously, guy growing up with me, Stephen Gerrard, played for Liverpool. Okay. No. Um, okay. Yeah, Stephen Gerrard's obviously the number one for me all time player. Just really? idol, idol growing up watching him playing for Liverpool, just unbelievable. Um, I'd I'd go as far back when I was younger to, uh, do you know what? It's hard saying these because there's so many players that I've watched growing up. Um, to be honest, even though I wasn't a supporter of them, I really liked Thierry Henry growing up. Just okay. thought he, I think he's still one of the best, best, best strikers the Premier League's ever had, just by the way he was. Um, I've got to say, let's see. I'll go, uh, do you know what? What is it? I'm not going to say you're Messi's and Ronaldo's. They're not, they're not the ghosts <laughs> to me. Just, you know what I mean? We can just cut yeah. this off. Then. Yeah, no, no. We yeah, can just go ahead and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can Fernand, leave. Fernand, Fernando Torres was one for me when he was at Liverpool. Um, Luis Suarez, my year and stuff. And then we had, um, growing up, it was, a, it was a goal for Liverpool years before, was uh, Robbie Fowler. Can, okay. Robbie Fowler. Yeah. Yeah. Fowler. Yeah. Then Robbie that, Fowler was the god on yeah, the, yeah. the cop in Anfield. No, yeah. So. They're the ones for me. And then, you, you, of course, you say nowadays, even though Liverpool aren't doing the best, like your Virgil van Dijk's just an absolute monster that I've never well, seen well, a centre-back play like him before in my life. So you're yeah. just the most biased Yeah, of course. That's the way Liverpool okay. fans so, are. I'm not saying anything so, else. Because <laughs> I could say, like, you're not going to put Messi in, the, in that I world. mean, they're the best players that the world has ever seen. But to me, personally, just idolising people. I mean, you said his top five. five. Yeah. That's respect. Yeah, that's, that's mine. Like, you know what I mean? That is true. Because I feel like yeah. a lot of top five, I think I take everything into consideration. But it's like my personal top yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. It's just the way, the way Stevie G you could just pick a team up and just lead and just do what he did what, well, whenever Fowler, he wanted. Yeah. Mad. Man. Robbie Fowler and Mad lad. yeah, I used to be on on like the the stands with my dad when I was younger. With all there was like a player called Steve McManaman, player called Jamie Redknapp. This is when I was a baby and couldn't even say the names, but I was chanting, I was pumping <laughs> my hands. And yo, what they also me. love is like English, like y'all do chants. Yeah, yeah. Oh my, yeah. Dude, it's one of the. So uh, I was in the Marine Corps and I trained with the the Royal Marines. Okay, or the British Marines. Yeah, uh, Royal Marines. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, they just had chants. Yeah. Like, they just busted out. Hey, We'd be drinking and just literally <laughs> busted out in a chance. It's chants. not even like a, a, a like Liverpool. Liverpool have really good songs for the club. Fantastic. Probably the best, in the, not biased again, but best songs in the world. It's just biased. The way it's biased. Look him up as a guy called Jamie Webster who sings all the songs, who's got his own like line now with his album and all that. He's killing it uh, just for his own music as well. But it's just a British thing to know how to sing, when, especially when you're drinking. 
It's a, it's you just, come with songs out of nowhere. It's so, literally. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're like, and it's, it's, it's one of the coolest things, yeah, I think. Yeah. You just hear a whole bar erupt oh, in, like, yeah. in, in like unison like that. Yeah, definitely. But, so, uh, brother, um, thank you. I mean, we could, I, we could go for another three hours. Oh, yeah, fair, you know? definitely, yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, man, Shankly Elite Training, is there anything you want to promote, you want to talk about, or you want to mention uh, here at this podcast just to close it out? Uh, to any of your kids or parents or anybody that is watching right no, now? No, just really. Probably thank you to everyone who's helped me get to where I am today, to be honest, and and uh, to help me in the last probably nine months since I started the uh, the, the the program and to, to lead it to where it is today where we just have kids coming from every avenue and are benefiting from what we do and the parents who are... I always tell my kids one of the main things to do when they go home is thank the parents for letting them come and paying for their sessions and it's a privilege at the end of the day, not just because, not saying because it's training with me, but it's a privilege to pay someone to pay someone to train right. their kids, you know what I mean? And that's where I didn't come from a background where that happened. So I went out and kicked the ball against the street, against the air wall in the street. But for parents to fork out of their expenses and just make sure their kids have got the sessions week in, week out, and obviously they know what they're getting out of it. So they, they, they consider it's worth it. And just really just to, just to mention, shout out to them for, for like always coming and always showing up and supporting me through it. And all, do you know what I mean? Because as obviously the only owner and I've got my coaches with me now that are doing a great job and they've come on board and different coaches that have come the past few months are doing a great job as well. But it's like without them as well and without the parents and the kids coming, it wouldn't even be a thing. Do you know what I mean? I could start it and have nobody, but just how quick it's took off just because they've they've trusted it and invested in it. It's It's phenomenal. So... Well, yeah, Boom. shout out to them and obviously you guys for letting me be on yeah, here as well. well. And Again, thank yeah. you, brother. Thank and, you. Um, th this has been a pleasure. Um, I just want everybody to go out there, shake hands with somebody you don't know and tell yeah, them, yeah. I'm glad you're here today. Oh, hey, big one. Big one. I love that as well. I told them to do that the other week. Just go ahead. I, I actually did a mindset coaching class in the high school, uh, which I'm trying to get going with all the schools um, very, very soon, hopefully. And I said to him, there's so many kids these days that don't have the, the social skills. Yeah. And I don't know what it is. It's obviously the social media being on the phone. Because I feel like back part. in the day as a kid, you're like, hey. Everybody said yeah. hello to everybody. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But and now you're just. If, we, if we've got time, just, to, just a quick one. I seen it when I was back home. And it wasn't even, in, it was in the schools, but also on the street. I, it hit home really. And I told the kids that. And a few of them almost started crying with it, which it shows that it hit them big time. I, walk, I was on the street with me and walking the dog. And I walked past like a, a three three different ladies and a few of them, two of them were like older or maybe, I don't know say older, I said older than me, probably in the 30s. And one of them would looked about my age and I walked past and just as you do, just walking the dog, smile at someone, say hello, how's your day going? And the only one that smiled and looked happy was the only girl sitting in a wheelchair. Wow. wow. They were pushing wow. her and I was like, wow. That is crazy. Yeah. What has happened to people these days? Yeah. And I told the kids that I said, listen, go out and say hello to your teachers. Give your teachers a high five, a handshake. Ask them how they're doing because even though you are kids and they're adults, that may make their day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just go through there. That so is beautiful. Thank so, you, Tyler. Them. Beautiful message. Thank you. Yes, See you guys next week. As always, it's been Stanley on the Voice. Go.